Here, we are going to take an everyday shape, a shape of an egg, and we'll try to approximate it using some geometric curve, a geometric representation. I'm calling it an approximation because uh, we have no hope of finding a universal equation of uh, egg shape, uh, which will be followed by all the egg-laying birds and animals in the world, because eggs vary a lot uh, in shape and size based on the species and subspecies and all that. Uh, but we can still come up with a very good approximation if we start with an ellipse. So here is an ellipse and somehow morph it, you know, uh, in an asymmetric way. So if we can make an asymmetric ellipse, uh, we stand some hope of coming with a egg shape. And for that, we'll start with uh, the parent of an ellipse, really a circle. And this circle, if compressed just in the y direction, just in the vertical direction, we would get an ellipse. And then if we modify this ellipse, okay, the scaling uh, along the x-axis, then we are going to get an egg. So we can represent this process in an equation form, algebraically here. So to start with, we have a circle uh, whose coordinates are cx and cy. And this is a parametric equation. Uh, x coordinate is r cos theta, y coordinate is r sin theta, where r is a radius and theta is a parameter which runs from 0 to 360 and takes us around the circle in that process. We are going to take this equation, we are going to take this cx, x coordinate the same, but we are going to modify the y coordinate, you know, take this cy and divide it by something greater than 1 to get a ellipse. So these, this is the equation of a ellipse. So I'm using EX and EY for the coordinates. Further, we can take this equation and modify this scale factor. Right now it's a constant, but we can modify it so that it starts depending on the X coordinate itself. And for that, I have just simply added the X coordinate to the denominator. Uh, this will of course vary the scale factor as we wanted, but uh, we are just you know blowing up the denominator. So that's going to reduce the ratio, that's going to reduce our y coordinate a lot. So we may get that asymmetric ellipse, but it will be very, very flat because we have compressed it too much. And if at all we get that egg shape, it's going to be a very pointy egg shape, very thin slender egg shape. And for that, we are going to temper it down, round it uh, nicely by adding this uh, factor A at the top and adding it uh, at the denominator. Let us look at this process graphically. For that, we will start with equation of a circle whose radius you can see is 30 units. And we will be using a nice tool in MicroStation called as the curve calculator. I will name this curve as a egg shell or something. And my angle u would be varying from 0 to 360 as this parameter t varies from 0 to 1. Uh, then I am going to define the radius of the circle to be 30 then my x coordinate would be equal to r times cos of u and y would be r times sine of u. Okay. Let's see what kind of curve we get. Place it here. Uh, then we'll modify this and try to get an ellipse by scaling the y coordinate. So let's call these coordinates we had as the old ones say cx and cy for the circle and the new ones the x would remain same as the old cx but the y would be scaled so i'm going to take this cy and multiply it by something less than one three upon four, and we will place it so place next we go on to the asymmetric scaling for that you can notice uh, in the denominator i have added this cx the x coordinate but remember the x coordinate varies from plus 30 to minus 30. So if we just keep it, you know, 3 upon 5 plus cx, it is going to run to a negative value through 0, of course, and then we'll be dividing by 0 and bad things will happen. So instead of 3 upon 5, let's blow it to 30 upon 50 and then do this addition. Okay. So let's modify this to 30 upon 50 and to this 50, we'll add cx. Let's see what that yields. Place it here and you will see we are getting there but uh, we have kind of done too much. Okay, So the egg is kind of very pointy. Uh, let me point something out to you. 
this effect of Cx is very severe in this case. How would you reduce that? Well, uh, if you know that story that somebody was given a line in sand and was told to reduce it without touching it. And what he did, he drew another line which was longer than the first one. We are going to do the same. Instead of you know changing Cx, we would reduce its effect by changing its surrounding. So we'll blow this up say 500 and 300. And you will see we are almost getting an ellipse. So we reduced, we weakened this Cx too much. Okay. So let us come up with some compromise value. Say again keeping it 3 upon 5 really, 90 upon 150. But in this case, we have sort of come to a via media. And this is our egg shape. And this is the equation. Uh, we can also look at this equation and come up with a nice mechanism to draw this. Every term in this equation can be interpreted as a physical link and we'll put one together. That's in part two.